Hey everybody, welcome to Franny's Square and to part one of how to make an easy three-piece v-neck sweater. Hey everybody, I am so excited to start making this easy three-piece v-neck sweater. Today, what we're gonna work on is making our swatch and the body piece. And I'll take you through that step-by-step. Step. In part two, we'll make our sleeves. And then in part three, we'll put it all together. So grab your tape measure, grab your pencil, grab your paper. We're gonna be doing a little bit of math. I promise it's not gonna be difficult. We'll do it together. And then we'll get started on our swatch and body piece. For this project, I'm using Mandala yarn and it's by Lion Brand and each skein has 590 yards and it's a three weight yarn. It's 100% acrylic and I'm using it in the colorway Known. So to make this sweater I use four skeins of yarn. I can actually make the sweater with three skeins but because of the way I want to match up the colors, it's going to take some extra yarn to do that. Depending on the size you're making your sweater, you may need more or less of this yarn. And you may not actually decide to even use this yarn. The way I'm doing this tutorial, you can use any yarn you like and any hook size you like. I'm using a five millimeter hook. And then I have my scissors, a yarn needle, and some stitch markers. So that's what you'll need for this project. Now once you pick the yarn and the hook that you're using, you'll want to make a swatch so that we can make the calculations for how much yarn you'll need and for the number of stitches and rows you'll need for each piece of the sweater. Now if you want to estimate the amount of yarn you're going to need, you can do that while making your swatch. And I went over that calculation during my design series swatch video, which I'm going to link here. So you can go take a look at that and you can actually estimate the amount of yarn you're going to need. So I'm just going to start with one skein here. And I start right on the outside. So I'm going to start my swatch and I like to make my swatch bigger than four inches by four inches. That way, when I go to measure my rows and stitches, I do it somewhere in the center of the swatch where my stitches become more consistent. So I'm just going to start out by chaining a bunch of stitches and measuring the chain. I want it to be greater than four inches, particularly once I start stitching, it actually seems to shrink a little in size. So I'm just going to make sure I have enough stitches and I'm going to do an even number because this stitch requires an even number of stitches. So, so far I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So let me just get out my tape measure here. Measure the length of this. And the last two chains are actually going to be a turning chain, so I want it to measure more than four inches minus those last two, which it does. I'm going to just add a few more just in case it shrinks up as I work. So I'm going to add about six more stitches. Okay. Now, for this stitch, in the fourth chain from the hook, I'm going to put a half double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
yarn over and pull through all three. Then I'm going to go back to the third chain from the hook, so the chain right before that one, and I'm going to do a half double crochet in that. Okay. All right. Next, I've used the third and fourth chain from the hook. I go into the I skip the fifth chain, go into the sixth chain from the hook. And at this point, you don't have to know which chain it is from the hook. I've used these two chains. I want to skip the next one and put a half double crochet in the one after that. And then I'm going to go back to the skipped chain and do a half double crochet in that. And this is what I'm going to do all the way across to create my crisscrosses. Okay, so I'm going to skip the next chain and go into the next one, half double crochet, and then go into the skip chain and do my half double crochet, and keep doing that all the way across, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, I'm at the last two chains here, so I'm going to do my half double crochet in the last one. And then go back to that skipped one and do a half double crochet. Now, I just want to make sure that this is at least four inches. So I'm just going to lay that down there, I'll grab my tape measure, and it's plenty long. Okay. So to go to the next row, I'm going to chain two, turn my work. Okay. And now what I'll do is I will skip this first chain and go into the next one, do my half double crochet, stitch I should say, go back to the skip stitch and do a half double crochet. And I'm making my crisscrosses all the way down, skipping the next stitch and going into the next one. And then going back to the skip stitch. And I'm going to keep doing that, repeating that when I get to the end of the row. I'll chain two, turn my work, and continue back and forth until I have at least four inches in height. And I will meet you when your swatch is done. One thing that it's good to do is really familiarize yourself with this stitch. It'll help you when you're counting rows and stitches. So if you take a look, each two stitches is creating this crisscross. So as you're counting, that's two stitches, four stitches, six stitches, when you're going to count your number of stitches. Also, this piece here, this, I say crisscross, but it almost looks like a V. That's one row. And you can see the difference here because here's my row below and here's the height of the row. So that when you go to count rows, this would be one row, two rows. And you'll need to do that once your swatch is done. So just pay attention to what your stitches and rows are looking like and that'll make it easy for you. Okay, so I have my swatch here. Let's just take a look at this. These colors are really pretty. All right, so remember, each X is two stitches because you put one stitch this direction and one stitch this direction, so it's two stitches. So when we're counting, every time we see the X, we know that's two stitches. Also, this is a row, the height of the crocheted X. Also, if you look, it looks raised here and here. I don't know if you can see that. You could probably see it on your own. In between there is two rows of the stitches. So you know if you go from here to here, that's two rows. That's an easy way to count. Or you can try to just count each row as we go. Let's take our tape measure. Okay, we'll start with the stitches. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the one because I like to start at the one on a on a, the beginning of an X. So let's just say we start right here. I'm going to lay it next to that. 
stitch. Okay, so if I start with my one in line with the first stitch there, I have two stitches, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and this is actually in line with that next stitch. So I'm gonna say 17 stitches in four inches for me. And then for the number of rows down, I'm going to lay the one right at the top of a row here. This is right at the top of these V's. Okay. And I'm gonna come down to here. Okay, so I can either count the V's. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a half. So I have nine and a half rows going down. So the three measurements we'll need to do the calculation to figure out the number of rows, the number of stitches, and the slip for the v-neck are the measurement from your shoulder seam down to the bottom of your sweater wherever you want that to be you could measure a sweater you already have i simply just take the tape measure put it at the top of my shoulder i measure down i want it to be about 23 and a half inches long and write that number down whatever that number is for you the second measurement is over the widest piece of your body. For me, that's where my chest is. And I'm gonna take it just from one side across the other side, just like this, get, uh, over the biggest part, and I get 21 inches. So that's the width of the piece I want. Write that number down. And then the last one is how deep do you want your V-neck? And for that, I go from the top of my shoulder straight down don't angle your tape measure, straight down to where you think you would want that to end. And I know for me, that's nine inches. You can also measure a V-neck on one of your sweaters. Just make sure you go from the top of the shoulder straight down. Don't angle your tape measure and write that measurement down. We're gonna use all those measurements and do our calculations, which are very simple, I promise. And then we'll be ready to start crocheting our sweater. Okay, so let's do the math for the calculation for the number of rows and stitches I need for my body piece. So first I know I have a four inch by four inch swatch. And in that there are 17 stitches across and nine and a half rows down. Okay, so for the body piece, It's gonna look like a rectangle. It's gonna look like this. And it's gonna have a slit somewhere in the center, but we'll get to that when we get to the neckline. For now, this is gonna go from the bottom of my sweater up over my shoulder and down the other side, and we want the stripes to go this direction. Now, when I crochet, my stripes are gonna be going back and forth this direction. So what I'm gonna to have to do is turn my piece. When I crochet, this direction would be the number of stitches, and this direction would be rows. But I'm turning my piece. So now this is going to be my number of stitches, and this is going to be my number of rows that I need. Okay, so I know that I want my rectangle from my shoulder to the bottom of the sweater to be 23 and a half inches. So that's halfway. So I'm gonna double that number. So I want 23 and a half inches times two, which equals 47 inches. So to figure out how many stitches 47 inches is, so this is, I want it to be 47 inches. What I do, is I take 17 stitches, because I have that for four inches, divided by four inches, and that'll give me the number of stitches per inch, but I want 47 inches, so I'm gonna multiply that by 47. 
and that gives me 199.75 stitches. So I'm just going to round that up to 200 stitches. Okay. Now for the number of rows I need, this measurement here was from one side of my body to the other side over my chest. And I made it a little loose because I didn't want it to be real tight. And for that number, I got 21 inches. Now that number we don't double because this is going from the bottom all the way up and over our back. So it'll be the same width on both sides, 21 inches. So to figure out the number of rows, we know that we have nine and a half rows per four inches. So that's the number of rows per inch times 21 inches gives us 49.875 rows or it gives me 49.875 rows, your calculation will be different. Now I want the number of rows to be odd, and I know that I overestimated on this number, so rather than going up to 51, which is a decent amount bigger, I'm gonna round down to 49 rows for this. Now why do I want an odd number of rows? Well, the reason is, this is our piece we're gonna have the V-neck right in the center. So to have an exact center row, you have to have an odd number. I'm gonna have 24 on this side of the center, then I'll have the center, and then 24 rows on this side of the center. So it'll be even. And then here is where my V-neck will happen. Okay, so you wanna make sure you choose an odd number based on your measurement and the one that you think is closest to your size. Okay, once you've done your calculations and you know how many stitches and rows you're gonna need for your body piece, the first thing we're gonna do is start our body piece. What I'm gonna do is I had a little bit left of this color from my swatch. I'm gonna end it right at, I'm gonna cut it off and begin my sweater on a new color because it just helps me color control. So I'm just going to Cut that piece off there. Now, my calculation came up that I needed 200 stitches. So I'm going to chain 202 because to get 200 stitches, I need 200 chains plus two for the turning. So that makes it 202. And for you, it's gonna be any number of chains that you figured out plus two. Okay, so I'll start out by chaining 202. And when I hit my 100th chain, which is halfway, because I want 200 stitches, I'm just gonna put a stitch marker in there. So I know this is my halfway point, which is going to be my shoulder, because I'll be folding this piece in half. And then I'll keep going. Okay, so I've completed my chain of 202. So now to start my first row, I'm going to go to the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four, and do a half double crochet, just like we did in our swatch. Then go back to the third chain and do a half double crochet. Okay, then I'm going to, now you just gotta make sure you keep track. Go to the next stitch that wasn't used yet, skip that one and do a half double crochet. And then go back to this one and do a half double crochet. Back to the skipped one. And you're gonna do this all the way across just like you did. So you see this one is used. It's this one that's the next one. Gotta keep track. We skip that and go to this one. 
and you'll get used to looking at it as you go. There we go, and go back to the skipped one. So you're going to keep doing that to the end of your chain. When you get to the end, you're going to chain two, turn your work, and continue with the same pattern, just like you did in your swatch. Now, based on the number of rows that you chose, remember you chose an odd number of rows, you're going to want to stop one before the midway point because then we're going to do the neckline. So for me, I'm going to be making 49 rows. After I do my 24th row, because 25th row will be exactly in the middle, 24 on one side, 24 on the other, when I get to my 25th row, I'll meet you here. So meet me when you get to your middle row after having done this pattern for almost half of your body piece. I'll see you back soon. Okay, I apologize for the sun coming in the window. I am going to have to get shades. <laughs> but in the meantime, I just wanted to show you, I've gotten my 24 rows done. And when I got to about 22 rows, I decided this is the color I'm going to have for my V-neck. And I want it to be even on both sides. So I started fresh with that color at the bottom of the 23rd row and for the 23rd and 24th rows, I did that color. And to do that, I had to kind of roll up the center till I got to that color. Of course, I chose the color that there's the least of in each skein, so hopefully I have enough. I have one more skein that I can uh, take this yarn from, so I should have enough to do the rows that I wanna do. Okay. So the next step is to mark off the center of your piece. So the center of my piece is at 100 stitches. So I'm going to count my stitches and put a stitch marker at the 100th stitch. And I'm going to just take my hook out for now. It'll make this easier and I'll put a stitch marker in the end there just to hold it. Okay, so I'm going to count my 100 stitches and get to the center of my piece because that center is gonna become my shoulder line and I'll show you that. So whatever the center of your piece is, mark that off, 100. So my 100 stitch is here and I'm just gonna put a marker right there. Okay, so I want my V-neck, I hope you can see this with the shadows, to be nine inches. And I know that I have 17 stitches for four inches. So that gives me the number of stitches per inch, and then I'm gonna multiply it by nine, and I get 38.25 stitches. So I'm gonna just round this to 39 stitches. Okay, so if I go back to my sweater here, from my midpoint, I'm going to skip 39 stitches. So on the 40th stitch, I'm going to put a stitch marker. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 38, 39. In the 40th stitch right here, I'm going to put another stitch marker. There we go. Okay, so now... I'm going to put my hook back in and I'm going to crochet until I get to my first stitch marker. And I'm going to continue the stitch we were doing. So I'm going to two chains to turn, and then just like we were doing the stitch, and I'm gonna continue until I get to the first stitch marker, and I'll meet you there. Okay, so now I've gotten to my first stitch marker. That's the stitch that the stitch marker's in. And now what I'm gonna do is chain 39, which is the number of stitches for the length of my V-neck.
Okay, once I have the 39 stitches, then I'm going to go to where my second stitch marker is. And I'm just going to put my hook through, pull the loop through, and attach with a single crochet. So now this part is going to be my V-neck. And I would suggest trying this over your head. Just make sure that it can easily slip you can easily slip your head into here, in and out, no problem. And then all you're going to do is from this point, continue on in your pattern to the end of the row. Okay, so I will meet you at the end of the row. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of that middle row. Now I'm going to chain two and turn. Okay. I had to change skeins of yarn, so I have some tails hanging that I'm going to have to sew in. I'm on my last bit of this color. I hope I have enough <laughs> to do the whole v-neck. Okay, so now I'm going to continue going back as I normally would. Until I get to the beginning of that chained piece. So do that and I'll meet you when we get to where we chain the piece for our neckline. Okay, so I'm coming up to that first part of the chain here. You can see it here. So I'm going to do my last crisscross before that. All right, now here is the beginning. I actually have two stitches that I can do another crisscross. One is the stitch that I attached the chain to. Okay, now I'm just gonna work in the chain just like it's regular stitches. So I have the next two chains here. I'm gonna go into the second one and then back into the first one. And then I'll keep doing that all along. So now I go to the next two chains, skip a chain, go to the next one, and then go to the one before it. Doing my half double crochets. I'm gonna do that all the way down the chain. And then I'll continue along the stitches and that'll be my first row on the other side of the center row. When I'm done this row, I'll have 23 more rows to do. And that's all you're gonna do. So you treat this like it's a stitch. And continue going. When you get to the end of the chain, then you'll just continue along here. And then you'll go back and forth and finish the other half of your body piece. And I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so in the end, your piece should basically look like a big rectangle with a slit somewhere in the center widthwise of your piece, depending on where you wanted your neckline to fall. I haven't weaved in my ends yet, as you can see. I'll do that. And if I were to fold this in half, let me just do that. You can see this is the body piece of my sweater with the v-neck. Now in part two, we're gonna make the sleeves for the sweater and then part three, we'll put the sweater together. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to put them in the comments below or send an email to my email address at frannysquare at gmail.com. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can so you can continue to work on your sweater. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own, and I'll see you soon.